Right, our next speaker is none other than an NEC member. And in view of what's happened, please don't throw anything at the stage. <laughs> Liz, please come to the stage. Liz Jones. Dear conference guests, can I first of all say how delighted I am to be here this afternoon at the UKIP Southeast Region Annual Conference in lovely Eastbourne. All of us UKIPers know that your Southeast Region has traditionally been one of the party's strongest areas, strongest for membership, strongest for resources, and by no means least, strong for voter support out there in the electorate. Having said that, inter-regional rivalry is not really a UKIP game, and I don't want to stir it up. We all live where we are and do what we can for our party as best we can. And that's no less vital in Northern Ireland or Scotland than it is here on the South Coast. I therefore pay genuine tribute to the UKIP Southeast region's great strengths and successes in our party's history, but I would also want to remind everyone that we are truly a national party, should I say nationwide, open for everyone to vote for and committed to the integrity of the entire United Kingdom. Now, not long ago, and very happily, I got an invitation to speak to you at this afternoon and was given a choice of two topics, free speech or taxation. Well, it's a no-brainer, I thought. It has to be free speech. Any conference speech and taxation would be like asking the current Chancellor of the Exchequer, Hammond, to give the best man's wise-cracking speech at a wedding reception, Dullsville, Arizona. Then I thought, okay, free speech is under siege from all directions, and UKIP must join the fray in its defense in our usual robust libertarian fashion. So I'd better just check something with you all here first before I continue. Can I all ask you to reply in one word, yes or no? Are there any snowflakes here today? No. no. Be brave. Any snowflakes? No. Good. Well, as you're all brave enough to have an open mind about free speech, I must now confess to you. I'm going to talk to you this afternoon about one of the most decisive factors in deciding the minds of voters at elections. What is that? Taxation. Very few issues matter more in political democracy than tax. Indeed, it is going too far to set down one of the absolute certainties of politics that, without a coherent and attractive set of policies on tax for electors to endorse, no political party will survive. The goal of democracy, the right to govern, and therefore to set taxes, is the supreme political power a party is granted in our system. Time and time again, the old adage about the two great certainties in life being death and taxes has proved to be bang on the money. King John learned this the hard way in 2012 as being part forced to agree the terms in Magna Carta with his barons, reining in many of his feudal tax rights for the very first time. Then the clocks go forward only by about 166 years when our blessed island and a new phrase enters our political vocabulary, a phrase which will reverberate through the centuries up until recent times, the poll tax. The abhorrent nature of this form of universal taxation, linked then as it was to feudal serfdom, provoked the peasants' revolt in 1381, led by Watt Tyler and a certain Jack Straw, no less. Strong arm efforts to collect poll taxes in Essex and Kent proved the straw that broke the camel's back and effectively ended the legal feudal status of being serf, basically a slave in England forevermore. Again, we see that the powers that be abuse their tax privileges bestowed upon them by you at their peril. It was just under 400 years after Tyler and Straw's pitchfork-wielding mobs marched onto London that a new brand of revolutionaries were hurling boxes of tea into the sea, which should, by rights, have been making their way to our shores from the port of Boston, under the rallying cry that there could be no taxation without representation. That was 1773, 
And just three years later, the USA declared its independence from Britain, that being our most terrible colonial loss of all time. So you see, you might think taxation is all about mind-numbing jargon such as ring fencing, hypothecation, thresholds and exemptions. And if our current chancellor Hammond had his way, that is all we would hear about. But actually, it is taxation which has decided the course of this island's history and will remain so, so long as representative democracy remains in the United Kingdom. And now, we in UKIP have arrived at another stage in our own development, a vacancy at the top, I believe. It is critically important for us to grasp that we, as a political movement, to seek influence over the government of this country, and if we wish to harbour any ambition to be that government ourselves, then we, as UKIP, must have a sound, a sound position on taxation. To that end, and in an act of outstanding generosity on my part, what I'm going to offer is a broad brush programme for our party's next manifesto on taxation. Because, make no mistake about it, if Boris Johnson does get us out of the EU by the 31st of October, his next move will be to call a snap general election. And if he doesn't, then he will have no choice but to do so. UKIP, therefore, has less than three months to finalise a sound set of policies for our next manifesto, and taxation must be at the core of that manifesto. My programme, and you're going to hear it for the first time, is unashamedly a bonfire of the taxes. Economic, an economic prosperity flows from economic activity, incentive and effort. There is absolutely nothing less inspiring to individuals than having to hold out begging bowls for various Corbynist commun uh, communist committees to bob out a few bob here and a dole out a few bob there via umpteen layers of bureaucracy through so-called enterprise zones, ta task forces and regional growth councils and so on whilst handing industrial policy over to Marxist trade unions through renationalization. Nothing stultifies human effort more than if everyone knows from the get-go that whatever you do, how hard you study, how hard you work, how hard you try, you will get exactly the same reward as the next bloke alongside you who does nothing. Ironically, whatever idiotic governments have tried to play the communist hand, the results have always been the same. Venezuela being the latest country to go full zombie. The fall of the USSR has not seemed to have brought this lesson home to our politicians, to my absolute astonishment. So what we need is a streamlined taxation system for the nation, which will significantly boost the pound in the average person's pocket. The biggest single tax that most of us have to cope with is income tax. My proposals here are essentially threshold-based rather than percentage-based. Currently, the first 12,500 in someone's earnings is tax-free at 0%. UKIP should raise this ta first tra tax threshold to £15,000. After this £15,000 threshold, basic rate income tax currently cuts in at 20% on the pound and runs up to £50,000. I say the basic rate should apply up to £80,000 of annual earnings. Finally, we have the high rate of tax at 40% and an additional rate at 45%. The higher rate of 40% will kick in after the 80% threshold is reached and under my taxation system, the 45% additional rate will be scrapped altogether. We will therefore have three rates of income tax at three thresholds and those thresholds will rise by inflation-linked minimum every tax year. Now, the next big tax take for most of us is national insurance, which currently works out at about 12% at the basic rate threshold until a higher rate, then it pans out at about 2%. My proposal is to keep this in place, but it is an obvious increase take from the 50 to 80% bracket. In fact, put simply, this simply amounts to a straightforward reduction across the board, across all tax bans, at about 10%. Now, at this point, I best check you haven't all fallen asleep. I've got some big news for you. And Katie Hopkins is sat at the back of the room. Oh. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. 
I'm very sorry, that just woke you up. She's not here. Sorry about that. <laughs> Another income tax, national insurance. The next bite the taxman takes out of our pockets is VAT. Our change here should be fairly simple. The burden is basically currently 20% on everyone as a sales tax. Fuel tax attracting about 5%. UKIP will scrap the 5% fuel rate on uh, VAT. Overall, the VAT route rate will be reduced to 10%. More items will be VAT exempted, judged on merit, and I would suggest, first off, female hygiene products and on-premises alcohol, meaning beer sold for drinking in pubs mostly. So that's what I call a voter-friendly taxation policy. Stop taxing women unfairly and give Britain's pubs a break. Our bonfire has got nicely underway at this point, and I would stoke the flames a bit further, and I want to uh, lobby some more taxes onto the pyre. So, are you with me? Let's stamp out stamp duty. Do you agree? <laughs> onto the fire, yes or no? Yes! Till death us to part. Time to bury the inheritance tax. Onto the fire? Yes! Time to dump the climate change levies. Let's put these stealth taxes into the nearest landfill. Onto the fire? Yes! Turn off the TV tax. The TV license has reached the end of the show. Let's axe the propaganda tax. Onto the fire? Yes! So I've done some broad, broad costing of all of this, and I assure you that the bottom line is this. For almost all earners in the United Kingdom, for every fiver they keep in their pockets, after all the current avalanche of taxes, UKIP's tax policy would put an extra quid in their pocket. We would therefore be cutting the tax burden by about 20%. Now, we should be brave and get drafting the finer details of these plans next week. As far as I'm concerned, because if we are to revive our electoral fortunes, we must offer a platform to voters which they can trust, which they can sense would offer new hope to everyone and free up everyone to imagine how they can improve their lives, their futures, by freeing them from the shackles of the taxman, the government, and overweening bureaucracy. There has always been more to life in UKIP than getting us out of the EU. We send our hopes and best wishes to Boris Johnson that he will get us out of the EU. And once that new era shall begin, and with it, we can find a new purpose again, rescuing our great democratic nation from the deadening clutches of communist claptrap. And where else better to start than restoring sanity, common sense, and honesty to our decrepit tax system? As chancellors of the Exchequer have said to the House of Commons on budget days over the years, I commend my tip -tox, oh, sorry, tip -tox ta I'm going to say it now, <laughs> tip-top tax system to this party, especially to your regional conference today. Thank you very much.